Snapdragon 8 Gen 5 versus Snapdragon 8 Elite Gen 5. This comparison is honestly way more confusing than it should be. Qualcomm dropped the Elite version first, the Big Daddy chip, and before we could even breathe, they released the Snapdragon 8 Gen 5. No Elite in the name, so you'd expect it to be weak, right? Yeah, about that. Let's get into it. So here's what's crazy. When Qualcomm launched the 8 Gen 5, they didn't compare it to the Elite. Nope, they compared it to the 8 Gen 3 from two years ago. And that instantly made everyone think, wait, is this a mid-range chip? Is Qualcomm downgrading the naming again? Or is this still a proper flagship? So I dug into the performance numbers and what I found actually explains everything. Benchmark scores, the real difference. The Snapdragon 8 Gen 5 recently showed up inside the unreleased OnePlus 15R on Geekbench. Here are the scores. Single core, 2,784. Multi-core, 9,329. Now compare that to the full power Snapdragon 8 Elite Gen 5 inside the OnePlus 15. Single core, 3,594. Multi-core, 10,602. That's a 14% jump in single core and a 29% jump in multi core for the Elite model. So, yeah, on pure power, the Elite is the beast. No arguing, man. But the 8 Gen 5 is not weak. It still punches way above the old Gen 3 and Gen 2. This is still a real flagship chip, just not the maxed out version. Let's talk CPU. Same cores, but different speeds. Here's the funny part. Both chips use the same Orion CPU cores, same layout, same architecture, same everything. But Qualcomm simply tuned the Elite version to run faster. Snapdragon 8 Gen 5, two prime cores at 3.8 GHz, six performance cores at 3.32 GHz. Snapdragon 8 Gen 5 Elite, two prime cores at up to 4.61 GHz, six performance cores at 3.63 GHz. So basically, same engine, just the Elite version revs higher. Now in real life, scrolling, texting, switching apps, you honestly won't feel that difference. Both are fast, both are smooth, both will make TikTok, Instagram, YouTube feel the exact same. You only notice the Elite's extra power during heavy stuff like gaming, video editing, long AI tasks, and so on. GPU time, same Adreno 840, but not really the same. Here's where things get interesting. On the Snapdragon 8 Gen 5, like inside the Moto X70 Ultra Leak, the GPU runs at 384 MHz. But on the Elite chip, like in the Realme GT8 Pro listing, it has two modes, 384 MHz, 768 MHz boost mode. That boost mode is missing on the normal 8 Gen 5, and the Elite gets something the 8 Gen 5 doesn't, high performance memory. 18 megabytes of dedicated ultra-fast memory. The sound's small, but this thing helps a lot with faster GPU bandwidth, smoother high FPS gaming, better ray tracing, lower latency. Qualcomm basically gave the Elite chip a turbo button and then removed that button on the 8 Gen 5. But, and this is important, the normal 8 Gen 5 still has the new Slice GPU architecture, full ray tracing, and Snapdragon Elite gaming features. So don't think it's weak, it's still a beast for gaming. You can run Genshin, Fortnite, COD Mobile, and even emulators like EGNS at 60 or 120 FPS depending on the device. Modem and AI differences. This is where Elite wins again. Both chips support crazy AI performance. Both have strong MPUs, both handle on-device AI really well. But the modem is where Qualcomm separates them again. Snapdragon 8 Gen 5, X80 modem. Snapdragon 8 Elite Gen 5, X85 modem, more AI features, and faster speeds. The Elite modem is better for 5G download speeds, upload speeds, and AI-based network optimization. Not a huge difference for everyday users, but it's another reason OEMs will put the Elite chip in premium models only. Camera and multimedia, same flagship ISP. Good news, the Snapdragon 8 Gen 5 actually keeps the 20-bit triple AI ISP from the Elite Gen 5. That means better low-light photos, better HDR, faster image processing, better 8K playback, cleaner video recordings. Plus, it supports Wi-Fi 7, Bluetooth 6, LE Audio, 8K video playback, Snapdragon audio enhancements. Basically, everything you expect from a premium chip. So, what's the real difference? Here's the simple version. 
Snapdragon 8 Gen 5, flagship chip, no GPU boost mode, lower CPU speeds, no high performance 18 memory memory, slightly weaker AI modem, still extremely powerful and efficient. Snapdragon 8 Elite Gen 5, the absolute top tier chip, max GPU speeds, max CPU speeds, extra memory for the GPU, better modem, higher scores, made for true premium phones. Think of it like this, 8 Gen 5 is flagship, 8 Elite is super flagship. OnePlus 15R versus OnePlus 15, Galaxy S26 versus Galaxy S26 Ultra, that type of difference. But here's the big question, which one should you care about? Honestly, unless you're a gamer who wants the best of the best, you will not notice the difference. Scrolling, same. Apps, same. Watching TikTok, same. Taking photos, almost identical. The Elite is only for people who want max FPS, max stability, max power under long gaming sessions, the fastest AI effects, the most future-proof device. If that's you, go Elite. If not, the 8105 is still more power than 90% of users ever need. Final thoughts. Qualcomm didn't make a weaker chip, they made a smarter lineup. Instead of one monster chip for every phone, they now have a super chip for premium phones, a still powerful chip for regular flagship phones. So the Elite is for the thousand plus dollar phones, the 8 Gen 5 is for the 600 to 800 dollar phones, and honestly, this split makes sense. But yeah, Qualcomm's naming is still terrible.